Hello, this is Dilly Gofarb and thank you very much for joining me here today. Today I'm going to be talking about how much protein is really enough for consumption for our health. Because we all know that protein is very important for our health and people who don't get sufficient protein uh, may suffer from serious consequences including malnutrition and kawashiorkor, which is a disease which is a protein malnutrition. Now the body needs protein to build and repair cells and to make enzymes and hormones and they're the building blocks of many many tissues and because protein plays such a vital role in building bone, skin and uh, blood tissue, cartilage and all of our muscle mass then we do need to consume sufficient amounts on a daily basis. Now there are 22 amino acids, but not all of these are essential, meaning not all of them need to come from our diet on a regular basis. Only nine of them are essential, so we must get those from our diet. The remaining 13 are non-essential, the body can make them on its own, and it doesn't need to get them from uh, exterior sources. Now, any protein that is ingested is broken down into separate amino acids, which are then put back together to create different proteins that the body needs. So there is constant buildup and breakdown of proteins in our body because tissues need to be renewed. There's always um, repair of tissues, and this is an on ongoing process. So for example, if the body wants to make hemoglobin, which is the part of the red blood cells that carries the oxygen around the body, or wants to build new heart tissue if, uh, we've, if there has been some kind of problem with our heart tissue, or that it hasn't received sufficient oxygen due to a faulty diet, then we would uh, need to repair those tissues. So th those are just a few examples. Now the amino acid uh, pool actually changes itself three to four times a day. So there is definitely need for protein from the diet, but how much is enough? And is there such a thing as too much protein from the diet? Well, let's look into those. According to the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, the protein intake of a person of average uh, weight should be less than 70 grams per day. Now for a more accurate number, you can uh, multiply your weight in pounds by 0.36 and then you'll receive the amount of uh, grams of protein that you need per day. Meaning a 38 year old woman who is 135 pounds by weight and is mostly sedentary to lightly active would need about 49 grams of protein per day to meet her protein needs. Now if you're using metric units, the recommended daily allowance of protein is 0.8 grams per kilo. And this is according to the dietary reference intake, which is a nutrition recommendation a system by the Institute of Medicine. So based on these calculations, the average male should consume about 56 grams of protein a day, and the average female should consume about 46 grams of protein a day. Now that is not a lot of protein. Um, according to the FDA, uh, they have a different standard of protein recommendations and they do it by a 2000 calorie diet should have 50 grams of protein in it. That's what they say. And that's for a sedentary to very lightly active person. So if you're interested in maintaining a whole food plant-based diet because of humanitarian health or environmental issues, then you know that getting these 50 grams, these recommended 50 grams a day is very, very easy to do. It, it's really effortless. In fact, plant-based proteins are considered more healthy choices than those of high quality animal-based proteins um, because of the fact that uh, it has been proven that slow and steady synthesis of new proteins, meaning not receiving the whole amino acid pool in one go from one source, has actually been proven to be healthier. And these low quality proteins are much healthier for human consumption and there is no need for actually high quality proteins in the diet. In fact, if you look at it on a per calorie basis, then broccoli has more protein than uh, beef per calorie. And also spinach, the same thing. Uh, spinach has more protein than beef per calorie. But if you look at percentage-wise, then uh, spinach has slightly less. It has 30% of uh, protein in spinach, while beef has 40% protein, but it also has a lot and a lot of fat. About 60% of it is fat. So because of the most of the population's needs are around 50 grams per day, then this amount can, can be split into two meals. 
and I just want to talk for a minute about what exactly is 25 grams of protein and what it looks like. So if you want to eat soya beans, which are an excellent source of protein, you need only a third of a cup to get those 25 grams of protein. You need a one and a quarter cups of tofu, which is also quite easy to get, and a third cup of black beans. It's not and, it's either, either, either. A third cup of black beans, no. Quinoa has a low amount of protein, but it's a full protein, so it has all of the amino acids in it considered high quality, but it's a plant-based source, and you would need three cups of quinoa to get those 25 grams. So you would need a lot of quinoa to get it. Now, 50 grams of spirulina, very small amount of spirulina will give you the amount that you need, and one cup of nuts, like maybe a handful, and one and a half cups of whole grains have sufficient protein, and three quarters of a cup of whole sesame seed paste or sesame seeds will give you the 25 grams. Now let's see whether too much of protein can be bad for you. Well, because of the different recommendations on how much protein you really need per day, it begs the question if eating too much protein is actually harmful for our health. Now protein is often misunderstood and there is a so-called myth saying that too much protein affects bone strength and kidney function. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not really a myth. In fact, it is actually very, very true, especially if your diet is deficient in fats or you're on a low carb diet. Now, too much protein leads to ammonia buildup in the blood, which can lead to mineral losses, which will lead to uh, deficiencies in different uh, nutrients in the body and then you will suffer from different disorders that are caused by nutritional deficiencies. Also, if you look at human breast milk, then you see it has the lowest amount of protein of all mammals. So it just goes to show that we really don't need a high amount of protein in our diet. And on the plant-based diet, consequences of overconsumption of protein are non-existent really because the bulk of the diet does come from whole grains and you have natural fats and your, your diet is full of carbohydrates and, and many, many nutrients. This actually prevents the adverse effects of a high protein diet. Now, under such conditions the, of the plant-based diet, where you have sufficient fats and nutrients and uh, whole carbohydrates forming the bulk of your diet, even consuming three to four times the recommended daily allowance of protein is not a problem and will not cause any harmful effects that an overconsumption of protein will normally cause on other types of diets. Now, this is usually done by athletes. So if athletes are taking, are consuming plant-based diets, and they want a lot of protein, that, that is not gonna cause them a problem. But those of you who are on a low carb diet, do beware, especially if you're on a low carb, high animal protein diet, do beware because you can easily slip past the healthy concentrations of protein in your diet and start to suffer the detrimental consequences of protein overconsumption. So thank you very much for joining me here today. I hope you liked the content. If you did, give it a thumbs up and you may subscribe to my channel, of course, if you like this information on a weekly basis, I upload a new video or visit my blog at www.thegorilladiet.com for lots of healthy uh, information and nutritional information as well. Thank you very much.